What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single video. It's time for a recap of the eighth episode of the seventh season of Teen Mom 2, which kicks off with Uncle David telling Janelle that he misses her son Jace and wants him to be able to come over more so they can do things like hunting a little bit. And Janelle actually goes, yeah, it just sucks that, you know, Barbara is keeping him all locked up in her house. She should just move to Florida and leave Jace with me. It was kind of like, okay, girl, but aren't you the one who moved further away from Jace like each time you got a new soulmate? The two of them discuss the custody hearing coming up and delude themselves into thinking that Janelle's going to get full custody of Jace. In fact, she says that Jace is going to one day realize that Barbara's been deluding him against her the entire time and that um, the whole reason that she's in there big hurry to get custody of him and really pushing each time is because she wants to save him before his childhood is effed up. And it's kind of like, girl, do you not understand that this age, what he's experiencing right here, right now, every day, every time you're yelling at his actual mother, every time you're pulling your crazy stunts and, you know, D-I-C-K hopping, you are wasting away and damaging his childhood. Meanwhile, in Leah's world, Gracie puts on her best pumps to play with the family dog as we finally get a glimpse of Queen Miranda at long last. She and Corey are at the table um, talking about the time that, you know, last episode where they had to take Allie to the emergency room and how scary the whole procedure was and um, that the tests came back inconclusive, but they did have follow-up tests um, coming up in Columbus pretty soon. And when it comes to Petty Betty, she she calls Poppy to tell him that she dropped the bullshit PFA she had originally filed against him because the two of them, well, she's just realizing actually out of like nowhere that the two of them need to be able to be in the same room with each other in order to co-parent their children. Poppy was like, listen, that PFA was just so extreme and unnecessary in the first place and Kale literally scoffs. And then she goes, well, no, because it worked for me and now we're good. And I was like, she is such a repulsive person, and I hate to say this, but, and this is probably the first time I've ever said this, but some people are so repulsive from the inside that it spews over to their outsides, and that's all I saw when I was looking at Kale in that scene. Absolutely disgusting and ungrateful. Like, you know like how people like Steve Bannon are repulsive to look at, and you know that their personalities are even worse? It was one of those kinds of situations for me. The whole PFA thing is absolutely ridiculous, and I hope she gets grilled for it one day, because she knew damn well, just like when she was filing against Joe, that Javi would never abuse her or the kids, and it's just something she does to play around with the court systems out of spite so batter up Chris because your ass is next meanwhile Brittany and Brianna have the same convo they have ever seen and every episode about Lewis stepping up for baby Stella Lewis actually goes to another um, ultrasound or whatever check up with Brianna for the baby and they talk a little bit later about him apartment hunting and Lewis lets Brianna know that he's looking at apartments that are about 30 minutes away from her home because they're more in his price range. And this really upsets Brianna because it scares her that it's gonna be an excuse for him to not be able to see his daughter more. She's like, he's gonna be complaining about gas, tolls and things like that. So why not move closer? Y'all, I've said it once and I'll say it again. I do not feel the least bit bad for a broad dumb enough to go ahead and get knocked up within 30 days by someone she met at the damn club. This is where my blood pressure begins to rise because Kristen, the shit stirring producer that I absolutely cannot stand, um, starts talking to Barbara about custody and Barbara tells her that Jace is actually in therapy now, which is good because remember, um, a doctor was really concerned about his seeming lack of empathy a couple of episodes ago and she also reveals that Jess um, actually breaks down crying at the thought of going over to Janelle's house for the weekends because she says that Jace cries um, that David and Marissa are really really mean to him and what really really mean can even you know mean for a child that age could be anything and it's really sad to think that Janelle could potentially be allowing yet another you know, quote unquote, step parent. I don't, you know, I'm saying step parent, quote unquote, because we all know these men don't give a shit about her kids, right? Um, to, first of all, discipline her child and do it roughly, you know, like she's allowed other guys to do. And it's, you know, all, you know, wondering what Jace is talking about was really, really sad. Now, Kale and Javi come together to watch Lincoln play soccer. And as always, Lincoln spills the tea, talking about, mom, you are so 
mad at my dad and as usual petty betty tries to pick a fight with javi for literally no reason as soon as they arrive at the field like the door just got closed you still hear the echo of the freaking door closing and kale's like why don't you have him in his soccer shoes javi and javi's like listen why don't we put him in his soccer shoes when he gets to the freaking field and this little exchange i think kind of like affected lincoln a little bit because he went from super excited to play soccer to being like I don't want to play. Okay, Petty Betty, here you are yet again. Do you ever get tired of being miserable and bitchy? Y'all, this episode was absolutely chock full of filler scenes. Like, they've got five girls and still nothing to work in because in the next scene, I don't even remember what happened. It was just background noise to me at this point, but all I can say is that Leah's unblended weave made a brief appearance on the episode and um, then we moved on to another filler scene of Chelsea's. I already skipped a couple of hers because nothing was happening and in this one, she and Cole are talking about moving the location for their wedding reception or whatever they're like because we're already married there's really not that big of a point of having this big wedding somewhere far away where people would have to travel and think about it with a baby as young as watson like six hours is it really something that we want to do next up we get the drama that unfolded that i covered earlier in the summer in a specific video when david and janelle rolled up on barbara with all of the kids at a restaurant and filmed her claiming that she was about to drive drunk with the kids they were so screaming in front of the kids making this huge huge scene these people are such trailer trash i tell you like it was disgusting to watch and obviously barbara was just so frustrated she demanded that they stop filming she was like i only had one glass of wine and listen barbara is like what 60s i'm pretty sure she can have a glass of wine and be fine to drive i'm pretty sure the average person can have a glass of wine and be fine to drive so long as they take some time between the wine and the drive maybe even have a couple of glasses of water and some bread in between like come on you guys are you serious it's so sad how whack jobs like janelle have to be like the most fertile people on the planet like it's it literally never fails back at soccer lincoln's time is over on the field and then um the whole family sits down to watch isaac play next and again petty betty tries talking shit as per usual javi is just sitting on the little chair he let her have the big one because you know she's sitting for two and um for some reason kale's like did you sit closer to me or something? And so Javi is just giving her this look like, really chick, do you think I wanna be Hulk smashed in public? It's bad enough you've done it on television, really. And next up she asks a stupid question like, oh, what net is Isaac's team scoring on? Like, why don't you just look at the direction they're running in for a couple of seconds in between your scowls? How about that? And you'll know. And that was the exact look that Javi gave her in the moment. And as that scene wrapped up, for some reason, Javi decided to ask her all these mushy questions that he knew she would not want to answer. Or you know this girl is heartless why are you asking her like oh when's the last time we were nice and civil like this you know she's gonna shut your ass down it was just stop enjoy the show at that point right uh back at the land before time janelle tells the producers a revised version of what went down at the restaurant where she claims that she and david coincidentally ran into barbara even though she's admitted to otherwise before right so she says that they went to barbara's house after the confrontation knocking for literally two hours what um creeping through the windows while the young children were still there and then call the police because Barbara did not answer her door. Like, is that like breaking a law of some sort? Can someone literally just knock on your door for two hours, someone that you don't want at your door, at your property, and call the police because you didn't open the door? Like, what? In what planet? And so she explains that the reason that they called the police is because they were concerned that Barbara might have been passed out, drunk, and the kids in danger. Like, over a glass of wine? You think someone's gonna pass out over a glass of wine? Really? Meanwhile, you were able to steal Jace's Adderall, right? Which Barbara alluded to last episode and be fine watching the kids. You were shooting up heroin while you were the, with the kids and you're worried about her having a glass of wine. All right, Janelle, mother of the effing century. Janelle then says that Barbara just told the police to get rid of them because they were not welcome on her property. And um, the two nitwits then actually claim with a straight face that Barbara and her attorney are probably just terrified, petrified, because she and David have this video footage that proves that she drives drunk with children. And it's like, no, you guys have video footage that proves, and police records, that prove that you are psychotic, you are stalkers, you scream in front of children, 
your own child, no less. You cause big scenes and you are just irresponsible, reckless and reprehensible, you know, excuses for people. And can I just say that the shirt David was wearing in the scene said so, so much about what he and Janelle are. And I have to give a major shout out to Sam for pointing it out to me on Twitter. All right, guys, as the episode wraps up, Brianna meets up with Lewis in his car to again talk about how he's moving 30 minutes away from her. And she cries about how that's going to affect their parenting. She's like, think about the gas money, think about the tolls and stuff like that. I already went through this once with Nova and she keeps using this phrase as if she's noble or she's heroic or whatever. And it's like, well, that makes you double dumb, right? The fact that you went through this once already and now here you are stupidly putting yourself into the same position again. You are double dumb, girl. Lewis tells her that he'll do whatever he can, even if it means taking a second job. And of course, Brianna is not buying it. So you guys, that is the final scene of this episode of Teen Mom 2. And I just have to ask you a quick question. So I saw that before the episode aired, Chelsea was having a massive Twitter meltdown, like, oh my God, they're gonna paint me to like hate Aubrey, to be like yelling at her all the time and blah, blah, blah. And so I expected a lot of drama in this episode on her end, or like at least her snapping at Aubrey, but I saw no such thing. So I'm like, did the people give Chelsea one version of the episode and another one air? Or is she just being really dramatic? Because she was like, when Aubrey sees things like this episode where she grows up, she's gonna think that like, you know, it was something that it wasn't. She's gonna think that I was really mean to her and stuff. And I was like, what are you talking about? Because I didn't see her yell at Aubrey or anything like that. Or was I missing it? Because I usually tune out during her scenes. Um, let me know in the comment section down below whether or not there is something I missed out on or if there was a fluke in terms of editing. I'm so excited to hear your thoughts and opinions on this episode. Um, you can also like this video, subscribe for more. Feel free to share it with your friends as well and follow me across social media where I absolutely love chatting with you. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.